today I'm going to show you how to upgrade a light switch. So you want to upgrade a light switch for a couple of reasons. Maybe your switch is old, it's broken, it doesn't work properly, or it's just old and it's, I just said that, or it's just not looking the best, not, maybe it's wearing out, maybe it's not working properly. Again, I just said that. So what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna replace this standard toggle switch. These are pretty common with this rocker decor switch. So to show you how to do that, first I'm gonna show you the tools. So the tools you'll need are a Phillips, a flathead screwdriver. The Phillips looks like a um, kind of looks like a cross, and the flats is obviously flats. You can you can probably find a lot there. Need needle hole pliers. I don't have the ones. There's better ones in here. There we go. Needle the nose pliers. Electrical tester. This is one where you. Uh, if I show you, you have to stick it into the terminals. Um, it's not my non-contact one that I use at home. So, uh, and I got some wire strippers. You probably, you might need them, you might not. And of course, your new switch and wall plate. As you can see, I got the new wall plate and the new switch. So what I'm gonna do is first do a disclaimer. So, um, I am not a licensed electrician. I am, uh, I learned how to do this electrical stuff and I know how to do it. You may not be comfortable with changing out. Pretty much a switch is pretty basic. An outlet is pretty basic, but changing a light fixture is pretty basic. Like I just changed that one, even though it gave me a bunch of trouble. Um, um, not that I couldn't wire it, just, anyway, that's a different video. Um, um, if you don't feel comfortable replacing a light switch or changing anything electrical in your home, call a licensed electrician. It's not worth your time to go and open this up, realize that you don't know what you're doing and possibly electrocute yourself. It's just, it's not worth it. So first what we want to do is we want to isolate power to the switch so there is no power so the light does not turn on. Obviously this is not. Um, so to do that, in my case on my little test rig, video rig, I just have it on a power cord that I can just easily unplug. And when it's unplugged, I know that it's dead because obviously if it's unplugged, there's no wire power going through it. But you do not have that thing. So what you want to do is uh, go to your circuit breaker panel or your fuse box if your house is that old. And you're just going to look for maybe you could try and read the labels. They may not be wired correctly. If you don't know if they're not labeled or they're labeled kind of weird, just go through, flip off all the breakers, start flipping breakers until the light goes off. And that's when you know that. So let's say, obviously, let's say I was changing this switch. I would go into the breaker panel. You can see this one is labeled correctly. So I go main lights and they do shut off. So that is correctly, but sometimes you don't know. So, so we're gonna go ahead and cut power. Once you have found that, once the light is turned off, you just wanna double check. So just flip the switch a bunch of times to make sure your light does not come on. Then you're going to take your flathead screwdriver and remove the two screws on the top and bottom that holds your cover plate. That's what this, uh, piece right here is it could be plastic it could be metal so I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and 
well, I got the screwdriver out. I'm just gonna remove how these two, uh, remove the new switch from the plate. I just, this is how I store it. Um, so I'm gonna take my Phillips head screwdriver and I'm going to go ahead and these two screws here, you're gonna go ahead and remove those. You're gonna go ahead and remove these screws. Normally, if you buy a new switch from the store, it's gonna have new screws, so you can discard these, throw them away with your old switch, or if you wanna keep them with the old switch. This particular switch I'm replacing with, I replaced it. So this switch came out of a, I removed it so it didn't have screws. Cause I needed the screws for a new switch. I put it, cause that one also didn't have screws cause I also removed it. This car and the alarm is going off outside. Go ahead and what you want to do now is once your switch is loose, go ahead and pull it from the top and bottom because even though your light turned off, you still don't know who wired this and if they wired it wrong. So you don't want to grab it from the sides because um, because you don't know how, like it could still be live. So you can see we've got the switch open here. So now what I'm gonna take the time to do is I wanna test each terminal on the switch. So this is a new end tester and I'm first gonna... So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna test one terminal to the box since this is a metal box. Actually, I can test one terminal to the switch because I can see there is a ground wire connected to the switch. So I'll connect one thing to the switch the yoke, which is what this part is. I'm gonna go ahead and test to each terminal. You can see it is not lighting up. Test the other one is not lighting up. I'm just gonna kind of pull this out of the box. And if it was, let's say for some reason, it was still alive, what you would see is, uh, if I can touch this properly without it shorting out. That's what you would see. You would see the light go on. And show that to you. I'm going to test that again. So just keep testing and if you somehow got the wrong breaker, which it happens. So just do not start working on this until you absolutely know. If you test, like test a bunch of times, make sure your tester does not work. If it's one of those non-contact ones, just test it on a no wide, like an outlet or something that you know works. Just keep testing it and yeah. So you can see on this wire, so this switch, you can see it has two terminals, which means it is a single pole switch. And what that means is that, uh, is that uh, this switch controls one light controls one light or one load or multiple loads from a single point of control from one single place. And as you, as you can tell, there's only two screws. The other screw that's on here is obviously the ground screw, the green ground screw. So let's look at our wires here. So connected to our one of our screws, I got a black wire. Um, that one looks like it goes into this bundle of wires here, this wire nut, this blue one right here, which then connects to my incoming power. I know because I wired this. And the other wire is a red wire, which I would assume, yeah, it just goes up into which uh, it just goes up into the cable there. So I think this one goes to the light, although, can although you can test it, it doesn't really matter. 
And the other screw here is a uh, this green ground. This green screws are ground screw. You can see we got a green pigtail connected to our green our ground wires in the back of the box there. Um, you can see the switch is a little dirty, so it's definitely time to replace it. So let's look on our new switch. So you can see we've got still got the two screw terminals. Um, the two brass screw terminals, those are our, um, where our hot wires go. One wire, will, our black wire will go to one of these screw terminals and our red wire will, your wire codes may be different, but what, why, basically it's pretty easy. You just connect, um, you just connect your wires that are on your brass screws of your old switch to your new switch. Now what I'm looking at this one is that there is no ground screw. And the reason why, well actually not the reason, but once I screw this in to the junction box, the grounded junction box, uh, J box with these metal screws, it will ground it. So what I need to do, so I guess that ground is not deep. So we're gonna go ahead and disconnect stuff. So what I like to do is just, it's so easy to not mess anything up. Just turn it this way so I can show you what I am doing. I'm just gonna go ahead and move one wire over. So, It may be a little hard with these loops to get off, but use your pliers or you can just try and like twist, twist it off. That one's off. So on our new switch here, uh, we have a couple of pots for spots for hooking our wires up to. I'm just gonna go ahead and loosen this other terminal. So we can just wrap the wire around the screw or on the screw there's these plates here. These plates here. And you put the wire in there, you clamp, screw down on the screw and uh, it clamps on the wire, which is a pretty good method. And then the next thing is those, these two wires. These are the backstab ones, which are not the greatest method, so don't use those. So in this case, since I already have hooks, I can totally just go on and put, but what I'm gonna do instead is just straighten this wire out. And then all I need to do is just put it inside that plate. And just tighten down the, the screw. And then like I said, what that'll do is it'll just clamp on that wire and give it a pretty solid connection. So next I'm gonna move over to the red terminal, the red wire, sorry. This one, I'm just gonna show you what the ground, the screw terminal, it's just like the other one. What you wanna do is make sure your wire is looped the same way you are tightening your screw. So if I'm tightening it to the left, or to the right, sorry, righty tighty, lefty loosey, then I want that to go on there same way so that when I tighten it down the wire is not gonna back out it's not gonna unwrap now the last screw is our ground screw and I mentioned this switch doesn't have a ground screw so what I'm gonna do is just I'm just gonna the screwdriver 
actually it's right because these screws both except Phillips and flathead. And also the square one. As you can see the little switches out. So all I'm gonna do is if for safety, I don't want to shove this back in the box because it could come out and touch one of these terminals and that's not sorry about that. So anyway, so I don't want the like I was saying, I don't want this. Like I could probably put this in the back of the box and we'd probably be fine. But I don't want it to then come in contact with one of these screws and create a short circuit. So all I'm gonna do is just for safety. So I'm just gonna fold the wire on in on itself. And then I'm just gonna put a wire nut over it. At least I'm gonna try to. Now, all your connections nice and tight, I'm just going to go ahead and push everything into the back of the box. Now what you want to do when you're pushing stuff is you kind of want to put bends in the wire so that your switch will just bend in nicely like that. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the two screws that I the two screws, again, if you just bought your switch directly from a hardware store or Home Depot or, or Home Center or wherever you bought it, if you buy it brand new, it'll probably come with screws, but uh, this one did not, so I'm going to reuse the screws with the old switch. So now what I... So now I'm just going to tighten these two screws, tighten the switch into the box. Just like that. Now you're going to take your face plate, put it on over the switch, and then you're just going to take the two screws, um, the two face plate screws, and just screw them in into the wall switch. To the wall switch into the switch and then you're gonna restore power at your circuit breaker and then test your switch for operation as you can see my light bulb is turning on and off as it should be now that is success and that is how to change out, update your light switch from this old toggle switch to this new rocker decor switch. So I thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.